So in this course, we're going to be working on refining techniques. And what are refining techniques? Well, those are those special extras that you add onto a garment. For example, lacing up the back detail instead of having an actual zipper, intricate beading, or maybe even a cover button to your design so that it really elevates your design and makes it personalized and it really gives you that individual look. This is your design. You made it. So let's get started. So in today's class, we're going to be covering refining techniques. And one of those techniques is going to be crystals and beading. So before we get started, I just want to briefly go over some of the tools we're going to be using in this class. I'm going to be using an embroidery loop. This one is, I believe, the second to smallest size. It comes just a little bit smaller than this. I'm also going to be using embroidery thread. It has this nice silky sheen to it, so it's really it comes up really pretty on the design. Uh, the standard beading needle, as you can see, it's longer and thinner than a normal needle. And if you've taken my uh, Know Your Tools course, it goes into greater detail at the different kinds of needles. I'm also going to be using a variety of beads as you saw in your notes there's different types of beads and crystals that you can use for your designs so I'm going to be using uh, just a variety of some of these just so you guys can get a general design I'm also going to be using a hot fix gun which looks similar to this it's an electrical uh, gun. It has a cord and you just set it for heat and I just have it on a basic tool setting. That way we know um, which setting we're going to use for our actual crystal application. I also have this heat resistant paper that I'm going to be using and that's going to go along with applying the hot fix crystals. And just your standard scissors and maybe pins, I'm not too sure. Now, I'm also going to be using that disappearing chalk. So if you have that available or any sort of marking tool that you may have available, these are good to sort of like mark out your uh, actual design. Okay, so, so what I'm gonna do first is just show you how to use the embroidery loop. And how we use the embroidery loop is we lay out our fabric, make sure it's nice and pressed. And we lay out that loop that doesn't have this connecting part. So your fabric should, the loop should go first, your fabric goes second, and then you place this on top. I just want you to make sure that your fabric is nice and taut and pulled that way you can have enough tension to do your design so place it on there just like that and then you go to the very top and then just sort of figure out which direction tightens it once you get that you just go in and tighten your loops so that they pull together nicely and makes your fabric nice and tight so that you can do your work. Pull that a little bit more so you can pull as you go. Pull as you go because you want the fabric to be nice and tight. So that's what you are working with. And it's okay if you have this excess fabric sort of hanging around it, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so I'm gonna lay out my design one more time just so you guys can see what this looks like. We're gonna be working within this piece of the design. So I'm not gonna do any sort of really super complicated design. I'm just gonna take um, this darker color for you guys to be able to see the contrast from underneath my sheer fabric. Okay, so as you can see, I've already kind of drawn something there. And I just used a piece of chalk to do the design. So if you wanted to sort of flip your design on this side where it was more flat, and then just do 
you know, sort of like a leaflet design, whatever design you want it to do. What I like about this chalk, as I've probably mentioned many a times, is that once heat is applied to it, it disappears. Or just over time, it disappears. And that's kind of what you want. You want it to disappear over time because you need the markings so you can see. But you also don't want any of those lingering marks on any of your fabric. Anytime you're um, working on a garment, you don't really want any of those editing marks you may see on a garment. So for the sake of this, I'm gonna be using bugle beads. If you see in your notes, there are a variety of types of beading that you can use for a design. There's glass beads, there's just so many kinds of beads and uh, bead designs that you can use. I'm someone that's very much in love with anything that sparkles and glitters. If you've looked at the introduction to this video, even the hairband that I was wearing, I really love things that just sparkle, but they come in so many different designs. I even have this piece here, as you can see, it has like a mesh backing to it. So they don't always come loose. Sometimes they come with their own backing and then you can attach them. You Sometimes they come that you can glue them on. But for the sake of this uh, lesson, we're just gonna use the ones that you would sew on. So I'm just gonna get a couple of really shiny, pretty ones. Some of these smaller And then what you do is with your, with your needle thread, you wanna make a knot at the end, and you can decide to use single or double thread. It's really up to you. Beading gets a little bit, um, I would say tricky. Sometimes you get too much into it and then you, if you don't have it doubly, uh, thread it, you might pull it through and then all the beads come out and you get really frustrated. So I recommend just doing a double thread. So I just go behind that design. And for our beading, we're gonna do a basic beading. So we're not gonna do, um, um, just for the sake of this lesson, we're not gonna do anything that's gonna be too involved as far as like sewing it on. You really just wanna get comfortable with the idea of sewing the beads on. So I just pick up a bead, loop it on there. And again, it's important to use the proper needle. Why? Because just because it seems thin enough, see it wasn't completely looped, so I have to go back and just reinforce it. So for mine, I have to reinforce it because of the type of fabric I'm using. The holes are a lot bigger. So just go back and sort of reinforce, all right. And that's another reason why I use a special thread, embroidery thread, just in case any of those stitches sh showed on the other side, it would at least have a nice little shine that will complement the look instead of having that dull look that normal thread has. So I'm gonna go back and now that bead is secured. And you can either do single, which means you go in and for every bead, you just place one single, or you can double them up, it's up to you. So once the bead is on, I go right back. It, depending on the type of bead you're gonna use, you wanna make sure that you have the distance. So if I go in here, the bead is gonna stand straight up. So I actually have to take a couple of walks over, and this just kinda takes practice, to make sure that my bead is gonna lie flat. And then I just go back in there. And I'm going to have to secure, like I said, because I'm using mesh, so I'm going to have to always make sure I secure my bead or it's just going to unravel. I go back in. And if you're thinking this is super time consuming. That's because it is. <laughs> it's not an illusion. It, um, beading is something that is very intricate. And in order for you to get the designs that you want, it takes time. 
So I'm just gonna speed this up a little bit and then we'll come back to see what our design came to look like. So now we can really see the design coming together. I just wanted to show you guys uh, exactly how I added these top beads on. So they need to be secured in a way that they don't unravel. So all I did was I looped it through as I did the rest. And then I just, instead of going this way, I kind of just went back inside that original stitch just a little ways away. And I just secured it, secured it in that way. That way I didn't have to worry about any unraveling and that it actually stood in place. And I just sort of flipped it over on the other side to get back into just outside of the bead so that you can secure it. Then you go back in the bead again. I'm trying to do this without flipping it over. There I go. Back down inside. And I just do this a couple of times just to secure the bead in place so that I don't have to worry about it coming out. And this is a very simple thing. I just wanted to get you guys going to see what it looked like to just create a simple bead design. Okay, so while I waited for my uh, application gun to heat up, I decided to add just another layer to my design just to give it a little bit more texture. So all I did was take some contrasting bugle beads and just line them along those initial uh, lines that I made. And you can even see how just that little addition added another layer and more texture to the design. So that's where a lot of these embroidered beaded designs start out. They start off very basic and something very simple as even like this leaflet branch thing. And then they can evolve based on the kinds of beads you use and the layering that you add to the design. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Videos are uploaded weekly covering dressmaking, fashion, lectures, and more.